答えは常に塔の上にある間に合う間に合ったらアリーナに売店ぐらいあるよなアフタースクールはい、みなさん、こんにちは。To another episode of the Webtoons. We took a break and we got some stuff to talk about, man. So we're going in to Viral Hits. That's the new series from our boy that does lookism. He's not drawing it, he's writing it. At the start of this series, I mentioned it before in a couple of the Monroe reviews I've done, is the one thing I like about Webtoons is they always have a unique premise with the story. Lookism, you got the body swap and stuff. And here in Viral Hit, we have a Skinny boy who discovered some YouTube videos to learn how to fight, and now he has a streaming channel on YouTube to fight against bullies called Viral Hit. It's definitely different from most most mangas, mangas we've read. This one has to do with like real time, like subscribers and stuff. Hits close to home. I'm pretty sure all of us feel that when we're like. Reading this, and he's making the numbers, and we're like, man, we could almost do that. He's rising and grinding. Yeah. Fuck yeah, dude. I just love, I just love how he's all about the money, especially with like the latest chapters. He's shameless in the situation. I like it. Straight up. <laughs> dude, he needs that cash. Not only, like, at first, he started off with a wholesome goal, right? To help out his mom. Which I was like, all right, dude, I can fuck with you because we kind of get the same thing with Daniel later on in the series, you know, which is, I think that was Daniel's biggest redemption arc in Lookism. But. To have that start off here, I'm like, all right, cool. You know, th- this is nice. But then <clears throat> my boy sees the green and he gets green. Say green. <laughs> But no, dude, seeing that twist turn, like, now that's become a fire form. Now it's a passion. Now it's like, okay, I kind of like this. Like,、uh, I think it was <clears throat> the third arc with the whole group of、uh, pranksters doing their,、uh, their YouTube videos, new tube videos. Is what it's called. And he's fighting the guy. He's like, Why do I feel adrenaline? Why am I getting excited? Why do I like this so much? I'm like, Dude, you're getting it, man. You, you're now learning how it is to feel a real fight. His innate natural fighting ability. It's refreshing to see our main character, Hoban, here、uh, get this excitement in there. You know, it starts to shake things up just a little bit. And especially in the, in the current arc that just, I guess, just finished, right?、Uh, he was fighting a、uh, kickboxer. Just seeing the confidence he has in his abilities from these videos he's watching because he trusts this chicken master that he has acquired.、Uh, you know, as a compared to Lucas, we don't really see Daniel have that same kind of energy and excitement for stuff like that. You know, I, and I, I think it's been a while for me to, have, to see、um, a protagonist have that kind of energy. So seeing it is really refreshing, and seeing how it's being done is really nice too. You know, again, there is that wholesome part to him, which is like, I still need to take care of my mom. You know, but then there's the other part of him being a kid his age. I'm excited. I'm making a lot of money. You know, on top of that, I'm really enjoying what I'm doing when I get into the fights. And just the, the diversity of the fights is really cool, too. You know, we have the Taekwondo guy. Like, th- this is where I can see the look is a mirror really, really well. Like, we have the Taekwondo stuff. We, they mentioned some Muay Thai. We got the kickboxing, you know. We have like all these kinds of stuff, the street fighting, and then what was the other guy?、Um, wrestling. The, it, yeah, wrestling. It's nice to see all that. It's done really well. Again, I said this when we did Lookism like a long time ago. He, this guy knows what he's talking about. He knows these styles pretty well to be able to like give this information out, have the character like actually learn this and that, and like actually show it in a way and give like full breakdowns of like the back kick in Taekwondo, you know, the, the gi coat, the Choke, you know, that you would do all these kinds of things, these workouts that you would do to make it make you build muscle in these areas to like be successful in this kind of a fight. So, I, I think all those niche details really is what takes it for me, too. You know, besides the story just being really, really good, Gail is still the best girl. I'm, I'm telling you right now, I'm gonna keep saying it. I think she's great, and because she has a lot of screen time, the uh, th- this goes a typical webtoon shonen kind of route where. We have our main character and like the super hot、uh, girl that he has a kind of like has a crush on. And it's just like, guess what? She has a crush on him too. She's super interested in the guy. And what does that mean? She's barely popping up. At least at important moments to have decent conversations. 
rather than just to be fuel for situations like with the uh, prankster videos right she got injured on that and that caused hoping to be like oh we don't do that here or the motivation for when he got humiliated the first time like pretty bad and he you know went mia for a month yeah to have her as a recurring character and actually interact with the rest of our other people that we're seeing i would like to see that but because of the role she plays we're not going to see that for a long time but i don't know we'll see because of the new arc man we're getting to that harem territory time we're really getting there dude and now we got bomi we got gaul we got uh what's her name rumi rumi, rumi. yeah uh, so this being the lookism author i think it's no surprise to say that all the characters are written pretty well in this series uh even the shitheads he has to fight uh, just their attitudes, and eventually when they do come around, like the Vegeta characters, like we see with the, uh, is it Muay Thai? Mance, whatever the guy's name. The Muay Thai guy, no, right? The, uh, the, yeah. the Taekwondo. Taekwondo, excuse me, yeah. Oh, yeah. The, the Johan of the series. Yeah, it easily becomes a super likable character <clears throat> for a lot of the audience. And, you know, not it just in the series, but I'm I'm sure people reading it like that guy, just because of his attitude and all that. He's like the wild, badass card. Of this deck. Is he is he supposed to be the one who like inspired Vasco? I think, or who trained no, Vasco? No, no, no. no he he trained Johan. Uh, Johan. We mentioned the crossover stuff before, and after yeah. reading this here, it's like I wonder if they're really gonna go full. Like I think we talked about that, right, Oscar? About whether or not they're they're gonna do this. And didn't he say he met a guy in that area? Yeah, that's what I was yeah. thinking. Who who was that guy that, that we fucking saw the still of? I'm pretty sure it was him. Which is why they look. Which is why they even look similar. Yeah, because there there was that one chapter that had some comments on. I think it was the the V uh, the viral hit channel, and yeah. it was saying like, "Oh, you should have you know acted like these guys." And he named Lookism characters. I think one of the theories was Lookism is like a a YouTube channel. That, that, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, dude, that's. Because, I mean, we just got through with workers, well, a little while ago, you know, and they got all their streaming stuff there. You know, it wasn't just, I can't remember, it wasn't just Quitch. It was a whole bunch of other ones, but Quitch was the biggest one where they got their their streamers from. Yeah. And and now that we're going to a different part of workers, we're definitely not going to see any more of that. But that makes sense. And that, that would be the only way I could foresee them, like, bridging that connection. Like, oh, hey, these are also popular streamers, you know what's up we're gonna go to their town kind of like that filler arc that we had where they went to the amusement park in uh in lookism it could be something like that they could go somewhere and end up meeting you know the viral hit community or like you know everybody there so like hoban snapper gail fucking bomi and whatever what i can't i can never remember the dude's name um the mma guy that's bomi oh the friend yeah it's not man sock is it no not another man sock bro that's what I'm saying. <laughs> Honestly, I'm glad I started a viral hit. It's a good time. I'm enjoying it. It's a moon song. Dream song. <laughs> Fuck it, yeah, I knew it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I gotta say, I really like the way he portrays assholes in this series. It's pretty good. Uh, like the the first guy, of course, uh, Pakago. Pakago. The Logan Lee, the second. Yeah. Basically. Yeah. He feels intimidating. And that's, mm-hmm. that's what I really like about these characters is like, hey, don't fuck with us. All right. Huh? Did you hear me? You know, they got that kind of attitude. I like that. I think the introduction that's my favorite is um, <clears throat> Tai Hoon. Hey, do you have 500 won? Oh, he's awesome. just sitting there playing fucking tech. And it's like, dude, at first I'm like, you just want to keep playing, you know? But then I was like, oh, wait, no, you don't. You just want to beat people up for money. That's okay. You're like the bully. You're like the bully who expanded his horizons and said, "I'm going to the arcade. Fuck school, dude. I'm just gonna go learn some taekwondo and fuck people up and pay my rent that way." I'm, I'm really interested to seeing what's coming up next. The latest chapter, as of this recording, uh, they kind of just showed off who are gonna be the milestones, I guess, because as it grows to more and more numbers, it's getting bigger. We saw a lot of the big new two people. I mean, I'm sure most of them will be bullies that he'll have to fight. You know, and I, like I mentioned earlier, it's like it's funny how it almost feels like it's their power levels, I guess. Like, oh, he has this many views. That guy's pretty strong. I like that. I, I think it's a good play on it. It's just a lot of bullshit that like all of a sudden their power level has to do with the amount of subscribers. And it's just like, what, five million subscribers, right? It's not like he's got like 
you know, a billion people looking at him or anything like that. He's not a conglomerate. He's just some fucking guy. Some piece of shit, you know. I, the only thing that I'll give it up to was that this guy is, like, some extreme, like, Yakuza type shit. And he's, like, bathing that guy in the oil. Like, just like Adam was saying, like, that shit was really awesome. That shit was cool. Yes, sir. And, yeah, I think they have to put that scaling for the subscribers just because of the premise of it. It's like, oh, he wants to make his channel bigger. Then he's got to get he's got to get bigger than these people because right now I think he's at like what fourteen seventeen thousand, and now he's got to get no, he, to like he hit the six digits right. I don't think he's at a million. He's at twenty two hundred thousand or two. Yeah, oh, okay. He's he's like a quarter mil, I think. Yeah, he just hit that. Mm-hmm. It'll yeah, it'll be interesting to see how he's gonna tackle these bigger channels if he has to. I think they're definitely gonna be targeting him based on how. Yeah, chapter 34 was right they're like oh this guy is interesting you know and then plus we still have whoever the fake channel viral hook like his boss he's gonna come back eventually right well i, I think that is his boss yeah that is his boss oh yeah i guess that would be his boss huh yeah, yeah. he's the leader he's the ceo <clears throat> right he's the right. big cheese you know he's like okay this guy's been interesting like i'm gonna keep an eye out on him and plus if he's punishing uh whatever his name is i don't even know his real name just the viral hook guy clearly this this is where we're going this is the direction we're going into which again uh i i said it you know before we started recording it this just gives me big four cruise vibes i i just want to see how it's all laid out and done like obviously we're going to see different kinds of martial arts mixed martial arts in here but what is it going to be how different is it going to be from what we've already seen in lookism you know because we didn't really have too much taekwondo we had more than Muay Thai. We had the boxing. <clears throat> we had the the judo from the guy with the sunglasses. We had jujitsu from Logan Lee. You know, so there's there's obviously a lot more we could see, but I'm just really interested how they're gonna do it in this route. What I'm interested in seeing what they're gonna do, mainly Hoban's motivation as we go further and further. Like, what's his end goal? You know, like right now, the only reason he's doing this is to get the money he needs to pay for his mom's hospital bills. And uh, luckily, she ju- he just got enough through donations to go with her surgery. And then after that, you know, when she recovers, she's going to get out of the hospital eventually. And we already know based on a chapter that she hopes that J- Hoban is not doing stuff like Viral Hook. Once we get to that hurdle, what's the future of the series? Yeah, we talked about it. He's starting to enjoy the aspect of martial arts, right? He's actually pursuing other means rather than just the tutorial videos to train. You know, I I hope he continues to train and it being outside of when he has to fight bullies. Because so far it's just, oh, I have to fight a guy? Let me learn something new. I want to see him go, actually, I want to just learn stuff that I want to know because I mm-hmm. find it enjoyable. So I think all those factors will definitely shape the course of this series. And then eventually, you know, he has to confront these new two people and go from there. Uh, but right now we're doing the classic lookism stuff. We're doing some slice of life things going on with this current arc coming up. A little downtime until we get to the next big guy. Which I'm sure is just right around the corner. So yeah. pacing, the pacing of this series is really... Uh... Really something. Yeah, especially with it being two chapters a week. I like the art a lot. It's fantastic. The way oh, the coloring yeah. works and all that but look stuff. Is it's it's definitely on, more honestly, it re- kind of reminds me of Poon Poon. The way oh, the expression Especially with get, the snapper. With mm-hmm. some of the characters. Yeah. Like, it's, it's like it, especially with, with Snapper, I'm like, okay, this is what it reminds me of. I'm, I'm really liking it, you know, and it's like a really solid panel, too. And just having the color in there, this is why I like Webtoon so much more sometimes. It's like when you get those really nice, really drawn out faces with, with all that work and then you had just a little bit of color in there, it's just. Yeah, it's really good. It, it, but it's really good one about self-empowerment. <laughs> like, especially especially when he, that one, uh, when he punched Paco, I think. He's like, I'm not a loser. Yes. Yeah, that that shit was... I felt a fire in my soul when that happened. Or even when he fought... Um, when he fought uh, Snapper to, uh, like, the, the very first fight that we get. I always think back to that one, too, because 
you know, it really hits home the way that he talks about his mom. Like, I I don't think I could ever forgive anybody who says that about my mom. I see a, a lot of angst in all of these people and uh, a lot of, you know, uh, character development that really comes from questionable, convoluted, and just overall confusing uh, character situations and dynamics. I think it really, like, drives out the best of what, other possibilities there are to the most obvious solutions when somebody presents like a problem this bad to you you know what i mean i Mm -hmm. think um i think when it comes to that we're gonna see a lot of interesting uh choices and solutions that you know that we we're not gonna see coming we're gonna make too many assumptions like oh this is a lot like look has it been this aspect and that aspect so once this starts coming into play, you know, we're basically going to be caught left field with the decisions that he makes and that everyone else makes, I feel. With, if we are going to get the Lookism crossover, if that's ever going to happen, I think the best way would be if Daniel goes back to streaming on K-Twitch, maybe Hoban's audience would say he should collab with Daniel or, you know, vice versa. Uh, because that is a thing here in the series, as we saw with with the with the what's her name oh uh Rumi yeah with Rumi you know like they wanted to see her collab with uh with Viral Hit and maybe that's mainly because they're probably in the in the same classroom as they've seen before uh at least their audiences so uh but I think that'd be interesting uh because you know I, I mentioned it before we recorded it's like yeah I'm pretty sure Daniel and Hoban's audience is like yeah we like losers you know let's let's see losers hang out and do something <clears throat> but you gotta remember we don't have Fat Daniel anymore. Yeah, we don't. So that's why I said if we'll get him back to streaming right. like that and uh, what happens, uh, which... Well, he's not the only streamer. Of importance, though, I think. I mean, Duke can always make a comeback, my guy. Oh, yeah, Duke was streaming. That's right. Yep, and then you also got to remember this new girl in this arc that Daniel keeps referring to that he wish he would have saved, she's also a streamer now, too. He convinced her to do that. <clears throat> Isn't Zoe doing that too? There's another yep. female. Yep, Zoe's doing Zoe. it too. Yeah, and then I think um, Crystal was still like in charge of a lot of in charge of one of the streaming companies, or a few of them. Yeah, she has the one under her own name, like K K K something. I don't remember. In my Twitch. Yeah, no, we keep we keep bringing it up about maybe she'll come in this arc mainly because of Vivi, right? Like we need a we need somebody to fight Vivi if she can fight. And uh, I say she's probably the prime choice just because of the scale and the scope we're getting into with Lookism. I think she might be pretty hard to bring out. I don't know about you guys, but I noticed that she's always close to um, Eli. Like Eli and his little daughter or whatever. I think like if they're going to try to draw her out or draw more of her out, she's going to be tied in with Eli a lot. Yeah, because I think the last time we saw her, it was just her doing the... The streaming stuff with one NC- one MCM, and that was it. So it's like on the rare occasion that we get to see her by herself is when that happens. Yeah, well, because she's also trying to unravel some stuff too going on with her dad, the chairman. Yeah, so she's got her plates full. But um, uh, Lookism Club chapters two through four. Ooh, man, a lot of stuff happening here. It's going into a dark place. Yeah, this one is. This is where it legitimately got really scary. Like, as a, one of those reality things, you know what I mean? Like, this is just some, oh, shit, like, I don't want to wish this on, like, any real person. This shit happens, though. You know, classic, uh, classic lookism, if you will. Yeah, just to, just to shock, to shock the community. You, you know, I, I think this is the next step up from what we saw in Workers, honestly. You know, because we did see the streamers stuck in the room once they signed a contract in the building, you know, with uh, Samuel and Alex. So to see this next phase come up with the drugs and, like, the potential orgies that are going on, like, in all these different uh, rooms, like, the the principle's the same, but the stakes are way higher. Yeah, no kidding. I mean, at that point, I, let's call it what it is. There's just pretty much date raping them going at it while they're unconscious but now i I do want to make one thing clear to be fair i can't say 100 percent if they're actually are date raping or if they're just just yeah get that from they could just be like 
I well, don't I'm know, just chilling out, but like no, there was I, that. Dude, I have comment. no idea. There's a lot of things. What, what was the comment? There was that that comment about being gay, and it's like, oh, don't worry, I, we're, we know you're the only one that likes. Guys. Oh, that's yeah. man, but okay, no, okay, but look, I, look, I'm just saying, I'm not gonna say anything until like the next chapter because I have no idea like what they mean by. Like, well, we're uh, probably not going to see it we'll once see. Daniel stepped in and started, like, going Oh, yeah, he started ham. beating the fuck out of everybody, yeah. The comment that really stood out to me is where they were talking about, like, treating their body and their and their treasures. I didn't understand if the body was the treasure, like, genitals, or if they're just talking about, like, the kind of shit that they had on them. Like, if that was a treasure, like, wallets and purses and, like, earrings and shit, jewelry. I just think it's a code word for those people, right? Because they are playing a game. And uh, from my, just just by guessing, the people that are unconscious are the ones that got invited. Just like the new girl that showed up into the series that lives next to Daniel. Right? Because she just started her streaming thing on TikTok or whatever it was. Tic Tac Talk and... You know, it's like, oh, she's been invited. Why? Because why not? It's not like she has a lot going on. Uh, but on some lighter notes, the the humor stuff was great between uh, between Daniel and uh, Jake. That stuff was funny. That was great. It was a good dynamic between the two as Daniel's pretending to be a snotty VVIP member. Jake's just, just like, um, so how about that uh, Sinu buddy? <laughs> they were playing like the, <laughs> the rhyme game that he was trying to play the word game that he was trying to play with Johan mm-hmm. he was trying to drugs, play drugs, Sinu yeah, drugs, Sinu drugs, drugs. Sinu I want to see more of them mm-hmm. yeah, I, I really want to see more of this fit Daniel who's like who's who's really feeling himself, you know, because he's always going back to the tall, skinny, like super buff Daniel, you know, but we did I mean, ever since Logan Lee, we knew that fat Daniel could could hold his own you know he's taking everything he's learned with the other body and moving it over to his original one yeah i always wanted to see more of that you know and that's what that's why i was ticked off when daniel started getting fat and streaming it's because he's moving away from that and like it's like he doesn't even care because like i'll just use my skinny body you know the runaway arc it was all about like no i have to be me kind of thing and uh, to see that come back in with his confidence that he got from training with the Russian woman, especially with the teaser when he picks up the knife that was stuck in his watch, and he's like, oh, I'm going to fight with this. Dude, my boy's about to go crazy. This will be something to see because this is the first thing he's learned outside of the hot body. And how is that going to translate with everything else he knows? And we could tell he's strong based off of all the training because, you know, he's doing all this anime shit, kicking and punching people away. Yeah, dude, he f- he fucked those guys up real fast. Like that panel happened so quick. It was like, oh, okay, dude, you're not even playing anymore. You know, because before he would kind of give it a quick chance. Like, okay, is this really what's going on? But I think ever since Workers, where he found the people like streaming, he just immediately jumps the gun. He's like, nope, nope, I'm moving. I'm making this move. Yeah, I can't wait. And you know, having that up in his arsenal, eventually we're gonna see the hot body use these techniques too. So that's also something to think about later down the line when he fights bigger threats like gun or somebody or i guess goo would be more of a a threat towards daniel he still needs to pick up on some more moves uh, i think he could take gun at this point i think goo is the wild card you really think that he could take gun i think so i i think he can go toe to toe with gun to where it's like where like it's a stalemate because we haven't really seen what goo can do and i remember at some point, I don't know if it was in the recent arcs or maybe some time before that, where Goo was like, I don't think you can beat me anymore, Gun. I think you gotten old, you got soft. You know, and then we started getting this resurface of Goo and like what he can really do and all these kinds of things. You know, and I think and correct me if I'm wrong, but in the flashback with Jay Kim, it was more Goo who was doing things and Gun was kind of on the side. Uh Goo was the one that was insistent on like starting the fight or some shit. I don't remember. Yeah, because as as we saw already with Ultra Instinct Daniel, when he was unconscious fighting uh, Gun, you know, he he had the upper hand for a bit. I mean, it's up in the air whether or not Gun was just losing just to have fun with it, just to see the potential Daniel has or not. But I think now that Daniel has even more determination since that moment, that's going to give him the confidence and motivation to actually go all out 
against Gunn and maybe start accessing that. Yeah, and you know, I, I wouldn't be surprised if there was a lot more that Daniel learned from Sophia in the time that he was training with her, not just to lose the weight. I mean, clearly we see something with his knife. He's going to pull out some hidden tech, but I... I wouldn't be surprised if we see, like, another two or three more different kinds of movesets that he pulls out of his ass. Gotta say, yeah, it's exciting to see what's going to be happening soon. Uh, I'm really looking forward to the next chapter. Uh, I haven't really felt like that much excitement in a while for the series. Um, I think because, you know, it is something new in a sense of where, I mean, it is, it's, you know, the original Daniel's body. Uh, And also, yeah, with the new girl being in trouble or you know being in a dilemma like this i was like oh yeah this is exactly why she's going to be in here and this is going to be a way for them to get close to each other because it's not hot daniel that's going to save her it's the og daniel and i think that makes a distinct uh you know difference in how their relationship's going to unfold as we go further into the series So, all right, guys, let's go ahead and get into chapters 504 to 506 for God of High School. Now, this is the start of the final fight. It's it's getting too much, if I had to say. Like, all the destruction coming on. Like, the planet's... I don't think the planet's going to make it at this point. Yeah, I think that with everything that's going on... It's a, it's pretty much a wrap. It's a done deal. You kind of get that, that inkling from everything that's been going on so far. Yeah, they brought, they brought, even brought the fucking, uh, the ship out, which was. It was that was a uh, Mandox. Was it the Ark? No, it was a Mandox. It was the uh, the Sages. Yeah. Yeah, but it is which called is the like, Ark. This is business, you know. Again, like you said, it's a lot because there's a lot going on right now. And then one thing I forgot going through back on one of the chapters is that. Uh, Mubong is creating a new planet by consuming Earth and that's going to be just for the elite humans that are going through this selection process. The ones the ones that were pre-chosen. Yeah, so this is like a Dragon Ball GT moment when Baby Vegeta brought that new planet in right next to Earth. And I'm like, oh, okay, so they're just going to transfer over to the new planet. Like, that's the only solution I could see, especially with, you know, it's dying because Mubong stole the essence of Gaia and that's not going to hold the planet. And yeah, man, Mubong, still the asshole that we all hate and love at the same time with him just saying, uh, Mandok's sister, all right, I could throw her away now. We don't need this. <laughs> yeah, dude, that was, that was rough. I'm like, all of that just fucking... I mean, I, I guess he did need some kind of incentive just to get to the, part, the point where he's at right now, but just to throw her away just like a key... That, mm-hmm. That's cold, man. Like, it's not even Mubong anymore. But it is, which is like, he's still a dick. Yeah, that's the thing, right? Like, is is this the, the god power, you know, overstepping what he feels? Or is this him calculating, like, no, I have to get rid of these emotions to make sure my goal that I've been building towards still happens? I don't think he's throwing anything away, though. I think that he's accepting what's happened and what he's done. Because at mm. this point, he's he's everything that he's done was becoming hypocritical. It's become beyond what he's he originally intended to do, because he feels like it's become beyond what what was important to him. Like what was important was to retrieve his sister and resurrect her, but then he realized, oh, it's not enough to resurrect her in a world that's already fucked. If I'm going to bring her back to life, I might as well bring her back to life in this next world, where it's like basically going to really matter. Everything that he's thinking about when it comes to her, like, oh, I hate humans. I'm just going to come back to life and I'm just going to have to keep dealing with the fact that I have to, you know, think and hear everybody's nasty, twisted thoughts when everybody's just human and human's error, you know? Mm. Like, I think he was thinking of this in the long run and, and like, in the end, it's going to make him or transform him into the thing that he hated the most. So before he wraps up everything in his nice little bow, He's going to off himself, which is what he said he was going to do. Yeah, because I think the main reason is, you know, he's not going to have full control forever with this body. And he doesn't want Tagatha to be the supreme being because Tagatha is just going to, you know, a third impact humanity as we saw like what was happening when uh, he first got power. So in a way, it's like, again, it's still showing like he is the real asshole, but he's 
doing it for the betterment of the world. Like this is the this is the only way he knows that he can keep humanity alive and safe from from gods. Like this is the this is the only way he knows how to save humanity from the forces of the gods and you know those other beings. No, he's going beyond it. It's like he keeps he keeps thinking to himself, what is something that I can do outside beyond the realms of you know what was already predetermined in this universe? And he's just like, all right, fuck it, I'm just gonna make my whole new universe with this power. And I think the only thing that he he succeeds at is he managed to get Gaia's heart. So that was something that they stumbled upon. Remember, gods didn't even know about Earth. They had to basically discover it and then discover the humans there and all that other shit that followed. But the one thing that they couldn't get anywhere else that they can only find on Earth was just all of those resources and all of those things, like dragons and all the other stuff. Mm -hmm. When it comes down to it, they needed Earth. They just didn't need the things that were already on Earth. You know, those things were cultivated and made specifically for those things, so it works hand in hand. They they all need each other as much as they hated it. That's how I feel like it, it must have went down. And in that process, you know, he's uh, needing to, to discover, like, oh, you know, basically, if we can control all of that, then I don't have to, uh, you know, allow humans to live in that same exact way. I'll just recreate it all and pretty much leave everything Leave, leave the new humans with all the cards in their hands. I'm curious to see how Mori Jin's going to tackle this, if it's going to be emotional or he's actually going to have to take into consideration what Mu Bong was planning for all this. Right? Because, you know, Mu Jin, not Mu Jin, Mori still wants revenge above anything else, but with Mu Bong, you know, acting the way he is now, very different from before, I really want to see that interaction, which, I mean, we're not going to get for a while, but. Yeah, I want to see how those new ideals will clash with Mori as he's willing to sacrifice anything to stop this from happening. Uh, but uh, on wholesome side stuff for these chapters, yeah, we see Daiwa and Mira finally get married. Hooray. Um, and then, you know, right now they're in the forefront with all this crazy attacks, uh, you know, grinding all this stuff into diamonds to, to fling over at uh, Mubong and all them. Yeah, trying to pierce his ultimate shield on a full metal alchemist. Uh, but other than all that, like the towards the end of the last, the latest chapter, you know, we kind of see everybody preparing for this final fight. So I'm just looking forward to the the big matches, really, right against the. Um, I guess it's three. Is it three now? Uh, people that work under Mubong with the deer, the the dragon son, and then the uh, the bunny. Right, I think the bunny's still alive. Yeah, so we're gonna see those matchups, and then you know, of course, we're gonna get the classic clashes between these armies that we've seen countless times in this series. Who did I see up at the end of five oh six? Here was that a uh, Mori coming through at the end? Because I was thinking that uh, he was gonna come through. Oh no, yeah, that's right. That was Iplo. Yeah, it was Iplo. Yeah, with the arc. Yeah, I can't wait for Mori to come. I don't know what he's doing still. I think he like got knocked out, or he's like. Trying to figure out how to carry all of all of them back. I was yeah, he's, he, he's trying to control all the staffs uh, while he's in his Mori Dan form, which they said, uh, "Hey, buddy, that's uh, you can't do that." And that is in the uh, that's in the divine realm, right? He's in he's on Earth. He's just in a different part of Earth. Oh, that's right, that's right. The Dragon Palace stuff. So yeah, I think it'll be a while before he he steps into the scene. I think we're gonna get some highlights with. Uh, the cast that's already there in the front lines before we see other people like Bake, Uma, and Mori return. And uh, all I gotta say is we better get some good time with Uma and Bake throwing hands with these people. That's that's I want I want to see that. Boy, if I don't see Mora Han, I'm gonna scream. If she doesn't have a good moment in the fight, the next time we're really gonna see her is the epilogue, or like at the end of the war when you know Mori's done and. He walks back and he's like, okay, let's go home. And that's kind of it. He's like, I told you we were going to live together. And then somebody stabs him in the back through his chest. It's it's Mubong's child that time traveled. Yep. Optimal, optimal defense. You mean the, the deformed one? Yep. 
And he's going to say, you can't escape crossing fate, Maury. Yeah, as much as I don't want to see it, I'm pretty sure his kid's going to come back at some point, which it's just going to, it's just going to be a thing. Right. Maybe Maury raises the child. Maybe that's what we're going to do. He's going to pull his, like his, how his grandpa raised him. He's going to raise the Mubong's child. Dude, we got enough to think about. So I think with that, we could go ahead and wrap up. Uh, you know, since we're caught up with God of High School, there's, there's really not a lot to say just because it's, you know, a high shonen series. But uh, we'll be back soon with more chapters and hopefully a lot more crazy things happen. And while we wait for those chapters and the episode to drop, you can go ahead and follow us on social media at Unverse Podcast anywhere you go. You can send us an email on Podcast at gmail.com and let us know your thoughts. What do you guys think of viral hits? So right on, man. Thanks, guys. We'll catch you on the next one.